sounds like Chicago. The registrar recorder has to do a better job to ensure that the integrity of the voting system is secure. Chicago politics in California. L.A. County Supervisor uh, Michael Antonovich with CBS Los Angeles there uh, reports that what uh, almost uh, 270 dead people uh, still on the uh, voter rolls. In fact, casting ballots. Election fraud in California. Well, the state has lurched leftward. Something we're going to talk about now with our next panel. Joining us via Skype from Raleigh, North Carolina, Republican media strategist and ad maker Mark Rotterman. Mark, of course, part of Ronald Reagan's presidential campaign back in 1980. And from Newsmax, Washington, a man, he's a rarity. He was a Republican who represented Chicago in uh, the U.S. House of Representatives, my old colleague Michael Patrick Flanagan. And uh, Mike, we played that particular observation from California, especially for you. Jerry Brown signing uh, liberalized uh, voter requirements, basically allowing illegals to vote there. Uh, California, does the voter fraud out there surprise you? You, a native of Chicago, Mike. Anytime you have one party rule, you're going to have excessives in the voter fraud. Democrats love to chase Republicans out of their areas just for this reason. The vote fraud is a failed canvas, which means you don't get the dead and the moved off. And then the Democrats know who's dead and who never votes and who's been on the rolls for a long time. And people who shouldn't be voting at all come in with their names and vote. This is why when states try to have some sort of reasonable way to control the vote by a voter ID card or something, they get shot down as being racist or something like that because it makes it impossible for the Democrats to hedge three to five percent in any election where they're the dominant party. I gotta tell you, Democrats view vote fraud in the same way most Americans view cheating on your taxes. A little bit is okay and you, if you get away with it you can almost brag about it. It's wrong, it's evil, it must be stopped and when it happens in overwhelmingly democratic areas I am the first one to point it out and laugh at it because it's wrong. And because it's hurting a Democrat now it's kind of ironic and fun but it's wrong and evil just the same. Let me turn to Mark Rotterman because Mark I've been getting a lot of information from North Carolina's Voter Integrity Project. I never thought of Raleigh as being Chicago-esque or even California-esque but there's some hanky-panky going on with ballots in the old North state, isn't there? There is. I mean, uh, I, I agree with the, the former congressman. Uh, Democrats think the dead have a right to vote. It's a real problem. We need voter ID. You should have to, to give a voter uh, your ID when you show up at, at the, to vote. I mean, what's the problem with that? We provide all types of IDs for people. We will take them to the DOT to get them a, uh, an ID, even if they don't have a driver's license. So I think the Democrats protest too much. Well, there is another kind of uh, protest going on within Republican ranks. It is something I referenced earlier. Uh, Republican leaders, Washington establishment Republicans, criticizing Donald Trump. Now, it was very interesting, Speaker Paul Ryan out at his new Ryan Republican rally in Anacostia, where he's trying to set up his vision of empowering uh, the economically disadvantaged. And, well, well, let's just watch and listen to this riff from Paul Ryan earlier today. Claiming a person can't do their job because of their race is sort of like the textbook definition of a racist comment. I think that should be absolutely disavowed. It's absolutely unacceptable. But do I believe that Hillary Clinton is the answer? No, I do not. Do I believe that Hillary Clinton is going to be the answer to solving these problems? I do not. I believe that we have more common ground on the policy issues of the day, and we have more likelihood of getting our policies enacted with him than we do with her. All right, so there is Paul Ryan. And, and look, I just got to tell you, Mike, I see what Speaker Ryan is doing. He might as well have a big sticker that says Paul Ryan 2020 on it. Everything he is doing is choreographing a campaign four years from now. At least that's my perception. Your take. But I'll tell you what, as the leader of what my great good friend, who is well known to Mrs. Hayworth, once called this group the Crybaby Caucus, as the, as the leader of that crowd, 
um, uh, I will tell you that, that he's got a job to do. Uh, if I can depart quickly, I'll, I'll kind of circle back around this very fast because I know your other guest is a genius and should, we should hear more from him, particularly from the Reagan years. But um, the, the senators running away from this today are raising money on this. And this is an old Washington trick. High public office, you disagree with the guy at the head of the ticket. You remember Bush didn't go around in his reelect and help a lot of senators. They run against the guy at the top and they raise a ton, a ton of money on this. And Corker and McConnell and Kirk are raising a fortune today off of this to help them get reelected. So you shouldn't be too distracted by that. It's the weird ways of the Senate. As for Ryan and this, this contract with Ryan, he's trying to out-Democrat the Democrats. He's trying to lavish money on minorities. They don't want money. They want a job. They want what Trump is selling. They, and Ryan would do better to get close to him. Yeah. What, what about this, Mark Roderman? Is, is uh, Paul Ryan just kind of giving us a, a, a Jack Kemp uh, redux here? What's your take on it? Well, you know, Kemp was one of my mentors. My father worked for him for years. But I will say this. I don't think it's helpful. I don't think he's being a team player. Having said that, I don't think Trump should bring up a lawsuit in a, in a political campaign when he's running for president. All right, I let's, think that's wrong. He's using that platform. Let's go to the phones at one eight seven seven newsmax <clears throat> to one of those places I once worked in television, the Queen City of the West, Cincinnati, Ohio. Tyrone is on the phone. Hi, Tyrone. How are you doing today? Doing great, thanks. What's your take? Uh, I, I completely agree with Paul Ryan on uh, both, both points that he took. Um, first, I, you know, first I want to say this, uh, he was true to his word. He kept to his word. He said that when Donald Trump steps out of line, he was going to speak up. And then he said that, you know, he was also going to support the presumptive nominee of the Republican party. And so I think that he did the right thing by doing just that, which was keeping his word. And I think it also brings together the unity that the Republican Party needs. It needs healing right now, and I think that's what he's trying to do. I think he's trying to be that leader of the Republican Party that he was chose to do. So, and that's a good thing for Paul Ryan. All right, so Tyrone, I guess we could say in your eyes, it's trying Paul Ryan, trying to balance out these things and living up to his word. Thanks very much for your take, Tyrone, tonight from Cincinnati. Now, we touched on it. It's worth going back to and. Uh, Mike Flanagan, we'll get your take on Senator Kirk. Here's what he had to say today. He issues this statement. While I oppose the Democratic nominee, Donald Trump's latest statements in context with past attacks on Hispanics, women, and the disabled like me make it certain that I cannot and will not support my party's nominee for president, regardless of the political impact on my candidacy or the Republican Party. So saith Mark Kirk. Uh, you think he's going to raise money off this, huh? I think he's raising a ton of money in Washington. I think he's not going to raise much in Illinois off of that, but I think he's raising a ton in D.C. off of that, as most Democrats, as most Republicans or Democrats who run against their candidate do. And there's a there's a great meme. I think we'll read more about this in the coming weeks of of uh, re the Republican candidates going to their funders, going to the PACs, and saying, "Oh, Donald is making it extra hard for us. I've got to have extra money because we've got to hold on to the Senate." And it's a great campaign trick. All right, let's go to another call from Pearson, Florida. I believe we've got Bill on the line. Bill, welcome to Newsmax Prime. Thank you. Yeah, I want to make a comment about all the Republican Party. They made it such a big deal over Trump signing a contract that he would he would back whoever won. Well, what's wrong with what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You should be trying to protect the man and help him. Not sit here and every oh no, we can't because when he gets it, when he gets up there, which he will. Uh, he, he's he's going to do something about everybody staying in office for a hundred years. Yep. Let's you know, uh, let's. There, there's no reason. There's no reason for it. when when we first did this back in the eighteen hundreds. We um, said no terms, and you didn't you didn't get paid for it. Okay. But no, they're getting paid for it. They're making a career of it. That's wrong. And he's going to bust it up, and that's what they're scared of. All right, Bill, you're making a good case for term limits. Let me turn to Mark Rotterman. I think Bill underscores this realization that the Republican establishment has done a 180, especially the Bush family, when it comes to Mr. Trump. Uh, your take, Mark, you get the final word, 30 seconds. Well, listen, first of all, I do not re uh, recognize Paul Ryan as the leader of the Republican Party. I think the presumptive nominee is Donald Trump. 
I think if you're not on board with Trump, then, then you're facing a third Obama term, which Clinton represents. And if that's what you want, then continue to trash Trump, whether you're Bush, Ryan, Lindsey Graham, or any of the rest of the crybabies. That crybaby caucus, Brother Flanagan brought it up. It still is operating. Uh, Michael, just final 15 seconds to you. Will this cryberry, crybaby caucus just continue on through November? Absolutely. They have nowhere to go. You know, they're, they're, they, will, they, will, they want to be around if Trump wins, but they want to be able to say, we told you so if they didn't. They're going to be arm's length from this. Trump needs to spend zero energy on this and focus on building out his organization and getting a communication shop together. Do this, Donald, and you'll be golden. All right, there's the sound advice from Michael Patrick Flanagan and from Mark Rotterman tonight. Gentlemen, you have our thanks. When we come back, talk of a new political thriller based on history.